Howdy, this is Butch. Sargon of Akkad did a video about the alt-right, and I did a response to it entitled Butch's Response to Sargon of Akkad on the Alt-Right. I'll link it in the description. This was back in March of 2016. And about a week ago, I got a comment from an ID, Karen Dips. Karen Dips had this to say about the video. This is at best... Well, wait a second. Let me, let me do it in the way that he really sounds like. This is at best exceptionally autistic. Do you really think anyone... Anyone at all is motivated to do anything at all because of some desire to make their genes survive? Most of the people don't even know what genes even are, let alone dedicate effort in an attempt to further their survival. You don't have to be a genius, like him I'm sure, to understand that people don't care about abstract building blocks of their body when it comes to their motivations. <laughs> I'm just I'm just playing with you, Karen Dips. I'll I'll actually honestly uh, answer answer the question first. I don't really take being called an autistic as an insult. Some of my best friends are autistic. Then he writes, "Do you really think anyone anyone at all is motivated to do anything at all because of some sort of desire to make their genes survive?" The short answer is yes. Yes, I do. The reason why is what I call intuited genetic self interest. IGSI, where Karen Dips writes, most of the people don't even know what genes even are, let alone dedicate effort in an attempt to further their survival. I actually agree with this to an extent. Generally, the way that we act in furtherance of our genetic self-interest is not conscious. It's actually subconscious. That's why I use the word intuited. It's intuited genetic self-interest. We have some very interesting science now that shows that features of women which men find to be beautiful are actually excellent indicators of fitness, of health. For example, long, lustrous hair is an indicator that the female has been accessing uh, good resources, has had plenty of food and minerals uh, to eat and that, that she doesn't have any sort of diseases which would cause her to, uh, for her hair to fall out. Often when people get sick, their skin goes bad, their teeth go bad, and their hair go bad. So when you see a woman with beautiful skin, teeth, and hair, these are indicators that she is healthy and fit for breeding. Men also seem to be very interested when women have uh, large buttocks and large breasts. Well, we come to find out that women who have extra fat on their buttocks and breasts were able to, uh, to breastfeed. They have energy stored up with which to feed a baby, to engage in lactation. So this is another excellent trait that we have been evolved to look for in mates because it means that our offspring have a better chance of survival. Hip-to-waist ratio is also another indicator of health. Women who have an attractive hip-to-waist ratio are healthier on average. So when we look at a beautiful woman and we see, we just know that she's beautiful. We just know that she's attracted. But you don't understand that there have been hundreds of thousands, millions of years of evolution where your ancestors, their genes that uh, survived depended on whether or not they selected certain types of mates. And so the ones who made better selections, the ones who were trained to find genetic fitness for mating, for breeding, to find those uh, traits to be attractive, they left more descendants, more offspring. We do see humans which are attracted to very weird things. They have strange fetishes, like for extremely fat people or for deformities. But this is the exception, not the rule, because more than likely, those people are not going to leave as many offspring as those who, who understand intuitively, who are intuitively attracted to traits which are indicators for genetic fitness. So we see here that we don't need to know about genes in order to act in our own genetic self-interest. It's one of those things where you may not care about genes, but genes care about you. We also see instances where you may think that you are actively seeking your own personal self-interest and self-gratification, but what you're really doing is seeking out your genetic self-interest. When you go out looking for women to bed, 
to have sex with, you might be thinking, you know what, I'm just going, I, I enjoy sex, and I want to go have sex with that woman. But it's obvious that the reason why you want to do that, genetically speaking, evolutionarily speaking, is so that you'll pass on your genes. That's why your brain rewards your body with happy hormones when you have an orgasm. That's your genes rewarding you for behaviors which further your genetic self-interest. You might think that you study and go to college in order to improve yourself so that you can get a better job. And that that's purely self-interest. Now you can go to the movies and buy a nice car. Well, actually, why you're doing that is so that you can attract a mate. Why do you need that house? Why do you need that car? Ultimately, it's to further your genetic self-interest. Now, sure, there are plenty of people who are able to short-circuit their genetic self-interest. For example, birth control is a circumvention of genetic self-interest. Anal sex is a circumvention of genetic self-interest. Masturbation can be a circumvention of genetic self-interest. Sitting around on your computer watching porn can be a circumvention of genetic self-interest. Your brain is fooled into thinking that you are actually pursuing your genetic self-interest when you're not. But just because you can circumvent the system doesn't mean that that is not the purpose of the system. Once you start looking through this lens, you can see how every behavior in which any human engages is in some way in furtherance of their genetic self-interest. And if it's not, then that behavior should be avoided. If that behavior is not avoided, then it will be selected against naturally. We see this happening today with the birth control pill, with abortion. A few years ago, The Telegraph published a post entitled, Atheism is Doomed. The Contraceptive Pill is Secularism's Cyanide Tablet. The upshot of the article is that religious people who don't circumvent their genetic self-interest end up leaving more offspring than people who use contraceptives. So engaging in behavior which circumvents your genetic self-interest is at best a, a short-term strategy which nature will quickly weed out. There used to be a religious sect called the Shakers who were of the notion that sex was bad. It was materialism. It was a kind of a Manichaeist heresy that they were engaged in. You can go look for the Shakers now, but you won't find them. Why? Because they circumvented their genetic self-interest. The last sentence that Karen Dips wrote is, You don't have to be a genius to understand that people don't care about abstract building blocks of their body when it comes to their motivations. And I would correct that statement to say that you don't need to care about the abstract building blocks of your body in order to serve your genetic self-interest. So in summary, humans do serve their genetic self-interest in almost everything that they do. In one way or another, you can trace it back to genetic self-interest. Their genetic self-interest uh, is not always in the forefront of their minds. It's not always something that they do rationally, although people can do it rationally. Generally, it's intuited. Most people work off of their intuition. So they're working off of intuited genetic self-interest, their IGSI. This plays a major factor in how humans operate, their intuited genetic self-interest.